it's he comes from one of the most exciting uh, companies in the industry uh, and most innovative. Uh, it's called Betable. I know Jonathan from the last three years. We've seen each other, you know, every in every city around the world. He used to be at Zynga, uh, um, and all, before that at Electronic Arts, and now runs um, as executive VP of Betable. And he will let us know how we can um, all profit from this um, huge real money gambling industry. Jonathan, all to you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I love what you're doing with Akamon. I mean, I think uh, one of the things that people often forget is that the Spanish-speaking audience worldwide is actually larger than the population of China. Um, it's a pr pretty phenomenal thing for, that you guys are going after. So my name is Jonathan Flesher. Um, I'm the Executive Vice President of Business Development at Bettable. Um, my background is actually as a, a video game developer, uh, where I ran business development at Zynga, and before that, online business development at Electronic Arts. At Bettable, we've been incredibly fortunate to work with some great investors, legal advice, and commercial partners. Um, we've had some of the largest venture capital firms in uh, Silicon Valley invest in our company, which is the first gambling company uh, since Betfair that Silicon Valley has actually uh, taken positions in. Bettable is the first platform to legally allow developers to incorporate gambling into their games. It's been 12 months since my last talk at Casual Connect Asia, and we've learned a ton, and that's what I want to share with you today. Our business model has been validated by multiple regulators, which now include Alderney and the state of New Jersey, and we are encouraged to see our first competitors uh, emerging as further validation of the space. Back in 2009, when I joined Zynga and I first started looking at online gambling, the market was served by offshore dot-com operators. Uh, the dot-com operators operated in tax-efficient jurisdictions such as Gibraltar, Alderney, Malta, and Isle of Man. The national landscape was dominated by state-owned mo monopolies or outright bans on online gambling. Fast forward to today, over the past five years, numerous countries have created licensing regimes in compliance with EU law. Online gambling regulation is now the norm. There's actually 15 out of 28 markets in the EU are regulated, and these include UK, Italy, Spain, Denmark, and France, and a further nine countries are in the process of regulating, which includes Germany, Greece, Holland, and Ireland. EU is likely foreshadowing what's gonna happen in the United States as more states look to regulate and tax online gambling. US online regulation can continues to unfold at a regulated pace, which means slow, and is still in its infancy since the UIGEA in 2006. Online gambling is currently legal in three states, Nevada, New Jersey, and Delaware. Delaware is a small uh, population state and it's run by the lottery. Uh, Nevada is poker only, and New Jersey is the first state of size that um, handles all casino games. Large population states like California, New York, and my home state of Pennsylvania have active bills under consideration. And there are significant brick and mortar uh, casino activities um, expansions occurring in Massachusetts, New York, and DC. So a lot of movement in the US. New Jersey's experienced some teething pains. As I said, it's the first state of size to legalize online gambling in the US. Market estimates were originally around 350 to 500 million uh, from most players. Governor Christie estimated it upwards of uh, 1.2 billion when fully mature. It's grown very slowly, um, primarily due to payment processing problems. The decline rates is really the, uh, the issue here, and it's hard to get an exact number, but the decline rates can be anywhere between 40 and 80%, sometimes 100% for some of the larger payment uh, cards like Discover or Amex. The market leader, Borgata, partnered with B1 Party, which is the last deal I did at Zynga, partnering uh, with B1 Party as well, and is at a, run, a net loss due to marketing costs. So they're actually, in Q1, they made about $7.7 .7 million, but lost $3.2 million. The casino category is performing well, while poker is softening. Casino grew month over month about 2%, while poker fell 19% in the month of April. In terms of search marketing, there's been some really big changes out of Google. Uh, people are probably aware of the updates, Panda, Penguin, and Hummingbird to the search algorithms but you may not understand its impact on the online gambling industry. It's actually changed the way gambling operators are acquiring customer. Numerous companies, B1 Party, Betson, Mr. Green, are opting for quality over quantity, 
And the prior practice of buying links and other black hat SEO techniques are significantly less effective. Understand that large operators are not immune to the Google changes. And in fact, Party Poker was penalized and dropped off search rankings completely for a month. That's a huge impact to an operator like BWIM Party. In the UK specifically, um, there's a big change coming. This is the onshoring of the UK operators. Traditionally, the market's been served by the offshore operators that I mentioned before. In September, all operators in the UK serving UK customers will require a UK license. And that carries with it a 15% gambling tax. With the new regime in effect, William Hill will pay an extra 70 to 80 million pounds in tax burden. Pot Patty Power, 20 million and 888, 21 million in pounds. Asia Online bookmakers are gonna be blocked from sponsoring premiership teams. And these are like 1888Bet, and 12Bet, and DoffBet, and Bodog, which is a huge source of exposure from TV broadcasts in Asia. Small UK operators may not have the profit margin to survive, so M&A activity will likely increase. Combined with the changing affiliate land landscape, this will turn the most developed online gambling market in the world on its head. It's like you know, playing a board game where someone just picks it up and flips the pieces up in the air. No one really knows what's gonna happen. Real, real money gambling is actually a lot larger than you guys think. People say, oh, well, you know, you, you're limiting your activity to the UK alone. Just to be clear, you know, social casino worldwide is approximately three billion, 2.9, 3.1, roughly $3 billion. The UK online gambling market alone just the UK is 3.5 billion. So that is actually larger than the total global social casino market. And it's still growing at roughly 10% annually over the last six years. So it's a big market just in the UK alone. If you look at that globally, it continues to grow, taking a larger and larger share of the total gambling market. It's over 30 billion. And it's been growing over 9%. Online is additive, not cannibalistic, to brick-and-mortar casinos. A recent study commissioned by Pennsylvania legislator predicted that if legalized, online gambling would bring an incremental $300 million of revenue to the state per year. So what do you do with this? So if you want to get into RMG, I have some words of advice to you as a developer. First and foremost, invest for success. RMG development is similar, but it's different from virtual currency. It's not a matter of just slapping a slot machine on top of your existing game. That just doesn't work. And a test will perform no better than a test. So resource development as you would in the same way for how you resource development for virtual currency. Developer partners like PlayScreen and Freema 3 Oak have dedicated teams, and it shows in their games. Piece of advice number two. The development is similar but different. Techniques you have used may not be effective or compliant. Predetermined spins are not legal with certified random math. I love seeing developers like Beecave uh, and others using certified math in their virtual currency games. It really provides a level of auth authenticity and transparency to players. You also need to tailor social feeds to the gambling behavior. You don't want to post a feed that says something like, your wife just deposited 100 pounds. Why don't you join her? That's not what's gonna go over well. Our social APIs will allow you to create tailored gambling social play like group wins. It's a very interesting thing to start pursuing in the gambling world, which has never seen this type of play before. Acquisition is also similar but different. User acquisition is difficult, but it's not any more difficult than virtual currency. The LTVs are higher, so the CPIs are naturally higher. Targeting is key you need to be really granular with your targeting and keep optimizing. So you want something like the 35, 55-year-old woman who plays on a, tab on a tablet while watching Deal or No Deal on TV, has a dog and three kids. That's the type of targeting you wanna get down to. And similar to development, you need to invest the time and effort to figure out the, the channels and segments that are working. The segments can often surprise you relative to what you're used to in virtual currency. Bingo is actually enjoyed by young males for real money, um, which is not typically a target market for virtual currency bingo games. Fourth, regulations often dictate tactics. Advertisements are an important part of regulatory compliance. The rules vary, 
uh, by jurisdiction with limits on channels and content. You want to avoid the Joe Camel issue, or slots for tots, as they call it in gambling. These are two ads that were actually banned. Uh, the first one, Transformer Slot, uh, was banned by the Advertising Standards Association because it appealed to kids uh, through the use of a comic book character. The second, Suarez uh, Sportsbook one, um, the ad had to be brought down because you're not allowed to use anyone under the age of 25 to advertise gambling, and he was 24 at the time. Fifth, the, the platform often dictates ta tactics. Apple allows gambling in the iOS store, but they only allow it um, in jurisdictions where you have a license. So you have to have a UK license to be in the UK App Store. Google is actually different. They prohibit gambling in the Play Store, but they do allow side loading of an APK, APK from cross promotion or a website. Some gambling operators have taken a pretty aggressive uh, view related to this, the, these terms of service, so you might see some of their apps, but we, we like to, uh, to play within the rules. The web, however, is wide open, which is why gambling apps are often built in HTML5 for mobile web access. So the way we have built our, our platform is to actually be uh, mobile, mobile optimized, which allows you to pick up both mobile web and the uh, desktop PC web. And finally, partner for success. You actually need a partner who can support you from development through acquisition to customer loyalty retention programs. Our platform is, work, is architected to work with all dev types, ranging from those who want to use our certified math engine, as opposed to just standardized math models, to those who actually bring their own certified math. We just want to be uh, supportive of our developer partners. We're launching a consumer-facing portal late this summer, which you can see above. And we're revising our economics to reflect the variety of ways we work with uh, developers. And finally, we'll be launching a publishing program this fall to support developer user acquisition, which will include affiliate bou bounties for developers who send traffic to other developers in our network. Oh, thank you. What, what's, what do you think a, a non-gambling developer stands a chance in a tough market like the UK now that uh, even the real money gambling guys are going to have trouble with the new fee, uh, tax? Um, I'd have to say I don't know, but I believe so. So similar to how I, I love that I see, you know, uh, indie developers uh, come out of nowhere, like a temple run. You know, a husband-wife team in their garage creating a game that just takes off with wildfire. You see a market that's just being thrown up in the air with a new tax rate, a new uh, impact of affiliates. Uh, so I absolutely believe that there's opportunity there for new and innovative content um, as long as you bring quality content to market and you actually invest in the development. So yes, I do believe that uh, uh, a new, new game developer could bring something to market. 